So it's a, a real honor to be here today, so thank you for that. Um, uh, the title, uh, as Francisco said, is Living with HIV, Designing and Evaluating the New Casey House Day Health Program. I want to put that into context of that I am a researcher and not a clinician, so hopefully your questions will be related to that. Um, so I'm going to first give a bit of context of Casey House and the clients that we serve, uh, and then get into a bit of describing the program and where we are in, in the phase of thinking about the evaluation of that program. So Casey House was established in 1988 as the first freestanding HIV hospice in Canada. Um, and as the epidemic has evolved, so has Casey House's services. So today, it is uh, 13 subacute care beds uh, within this inpatient uh, facility, and so that's the building that you can see there. Uh, it also includes home care and community programs. Uh, and the care is delivered by an interdisciplinary team, including medicine, nursing, social work, and rehabilitation therapy. So unfortunately at Casey House, we don't have electronic uh, medical records. So whenever we want to pull data, it's a lot more work than you might think. Um, so we did a, a comprehensive chart review of all clients that came into Casey House in 2008. So that was 83, it was uh, approximately 110 admissions, 83 discrete individuals. And what was surprising, even for the clinicians, was when we were writing and rewriting uh, the paper with this data, is that really understanding the amount of complexity in the clients. And you know, you're used to reporting these things on individual variables, so means and um, and frequency. But really, so you you know, talking to someone like Sean Work, who would say 50% of these people had uh, cognitive impairment. When you're talking to someone interested in substance use, we say 50% on admission were actively using substances. But um, on average, uh, there was 11 medications, six medical comorbidities. But the issue is really that how those overlap. And so I tried to capture that using this Venn diagram. Uh, and so what we did was define three complexity variables. So first of all, there's psychiatric uh, complexity, which was defined as having two or more um, lifetime psychiatric diagnoses. Uh, medical complexity as having three or more medical comorbidities and then unstable housing. So as you can see, there was over 90% that had uh, what we defined as psychiatric complexity, a third had medical complexity, and almost 20% had unstable housing. So only one individual of all the people that were admitted in, in, in the year 2008 did not have any of these complexity variables and 8% had all three of these. Uh, and I don't talk too much about, but we do are, we are seeing an evolution from in the last five years that substance use and mental health issues are, are even more uh, prominent. So I think um, what we do know from the health literature is that people, medically complex uh, patients are um, the heavy healthcare users in terms of healthcare costs. Uh, that they're less likely to be uh, satisfied with their services. They're more likely to have negative health outcomes. But in the literature, we also see that there's a, there's a paucity of evidence on how do we actually best care for people with all of these coexisting um, um, conditions. Uh, so one thing that, that Casey House sees as a priority is addressing the continuum of HIV care, especially for people with complex illness. So, um, currently, you know, the common thing is to go from inpatient care out to the home and, and whether or not whatever services they have to support them in that home, but that is, that is a, big, a big leap. Um, and we believe for the clients that we serve that we need something in the middle. In order for us to be efficient with our health care um, in the acute system and our acute care uh, bed days, uh, in order to decrease hospitalizations from people living in the community, we have to be able to promote uh, health within the community. Um, and so Casey House has planned and has funding to build a day health program. So that's a little schematic of what it's going to look like. Um, we're retaining um, a historic building on Jarvis and then building a four-story health care, a brand new building behind it. Um, so uh, another thing that I have down there is a picture of the Sherburne Health Bus, but that is really to indicate um, more uh, diverse community outreach. So that gets to the treatment cascade of that. Sure, this can help those people who are already seeking care, but how do we get to the people who are not engaged in care or are not adherent? 
Um, and so a big part of the Day Health program will be expanding the community uh, outreach program and, and hopefully it's a, providing that uh, care through the, the Sherburn Health Bus or through um, other facilities and organizations, possibly those um, not HIV specific. So what uh, sort of care is going to be provided within the Day Health program? So uh, on the left are uh, care providers that we currently have through Casey House, <coughs> uh, nurses, social work, registered massage therapy, recreation therapy. We have very little access to occupational therapy and physiotherapy, only what is what can be qualified through the CCAC or the community care access centers. Uh, but as we move into the Day Health program, these positions will expand into full-time equivalent positions and we'll be adding uh, mental health therapists, women's case manager, harm reduction case manager, pharmacist, dietitian, and uh, expressive arts therapist. And the last one there is the only one that won't be ministry funded, but will be funded through donations. So the Day Health Program uh, will open in uh, 2016. We're gonna break ground next year. Uh, this, the numbers that I have up here as far as capacity are those that have been funded specifically through the Ministry of Health. So we hope to be able to serve more, uh, but what is written there is 125 who access care through the actual Day Health Program facility, and then 70 through the various arms of the outreach program. Uh, and that we expect, so this is not a, uh, you're in the Day Health Program, although it'll be open five days uh, a week at start, ho hopefully expanding to, to six, um, that people will come in as necessary for them. Uh, so we, we expect to have approximately 75 uh, coming in on a day. So is in terms of uh, evaluation, and uh, I think uh, I've been very overwhelmed about thinking about this, and this is a day, uh, logic model that I drew up for the Day Health Program just to kind of start um, my thought process and hopefully uh, discussion. So uh, on the far left is where we are at now, you know, building interdisciplinary teams, building a facility, strengthening our partnerships for the outreach. Uh, in the green is, is the programs that will be delivered through the Day Health Program and then the outcomes. And as you see on the far in the red are, you know, ER visits, acute bed days, mortality, and, and um, I don't, I don't want them to be on the red and on the far because they're the most important, but of course we, we are reporting to the Ministry of Health and, and securing our funding, so we, we do have to look at those and I'm going to talk about where we are um, in terms of that, but it's really getting at the other ones, the more complex uh, holistic ones and which ones are most important, what measures should we, sh should we use to capture them. So I think as far as designing the evaluation of this, uh, these are the principles that came up with or around the importance of engaging uh, stakeholders and really that by thinking about this ahead of time um, I hope to be able to improve the intersection between clinical care program evaluation and research so that the same tool is is useful for all uh, for achieving all of those that we're really conscious of reducing the burden um, on the clients uh, we have clients who it we might be seeing them out in the community for six months before they can be uh, persuaded or encouraged to seek the care that they need uh, if they then come in the door and we give them an hour and a half of um, surveys and measures to fill out that, that's not gonna go over very well um, so and then back to you know I really see um, my mission as, as increasing the representation of all individuals uh, living with HIV and AIDS um, in the research domain and, and trying to address the issue of, of complexity so what we're doing in preparing for this is um, I've established a research advisory committee at uh, Casey House and, and uh, we're trying to do some pilot research. So my concern is that if this day health program is designed to reduce acute care bed days, it, it decrease ER visits, that for some people, especially those who are, are reached through um, the outreach program, that you actually could see an increase in utilization. So I really want to understand what are the, the healthcare utilization pattern of our clients today um, and, and what predictors are there for explaining the differences in those patterns. And I was um, thinking about having a research planning event, but I'm currently feeling overwhelmed about that. So, I won't talk about it. Um, so challenges. I think are really uh, balancing the right amount of care and the fact that you know this day health program intervention is going to look different for every individual and what complexity does that bring as a researcher to evaluating and showing that it makes a difference 
um, and then back to the issues of, of com complex um, populations and involving them in research uh, and, o and engaging them over the long term and addressing the issue of burden. So uh, I want to thank you and uh, I, if anyone has suggestions or interests in or thoughts, I, I would greatly appreciate hearing.